Well, cybersecurity for both companies and countries has been thrust into the spotlight this year. The U.S. has made online defense one of the centerpieces of President Barack Obama's agenda this year. We need to be vigilant in protecting against the misappropriation of trade secrets and focusing on this issue. The, the uh, Obama administration just the other week released a comprehensive strategy in, in addressing uh, trade secrets enforcement that includes trade, it includes law enforcement. Um, it's, it's a huge priority for us. But is your data actually safe? Not according to our next guest. He says traditional security systems like Norton, Symantec are out of date and that most companies and government agencies don't even know that they have been compromised. For more, Ashar Aziz is the founder and chief security officer at FireEye and he joins us live around the desk here in Singapore. He's usually based in the U.S. but in town for meetings so we're lucky enough to get to talk to him about cybersecurity. So Ashar, uh, first of all, do you think the bad guys, the criminals are winning? I think, unfortunately, they are winning. Uh, there is no question uh, that the offense has paced uh, traditional defenses in cyberspace, and they are able to uh, attack at will and uh, with impunity. Okay, so your company, you've come up with the technology of preventing and detecting attacks, APTs, Advanced Persistent Threats. No one else seems to be doing this. Tell us how it works. Well, the core thing that FireEye does, which is very different from traditional security solutions, is that we can identify unknown attacks in real time with a very high degree of accuracy. So we've never seen an attack before, and as it's happening, in the split second that it's happening in an enterprise network, we're able to pick that attack out of the wire, mm -hmm. identify it, and block it. So that's a very unique capability. Uh, traditional security solutions are based upon known attacks for which they create signatures, and that signature is their basis for detecting the attack. All these advanced attacks have no signature. Uh, and so that's long after it's happened, right? And that's long after it's yeah. happened, or if it happens at all, because in case of a targeted attack, they'll never see the attack. So, so here's the thing. I mean, uh, what you're doing and uh, the stuff that you're, you're selling sounds pretty cool. Uh, your main point that, look, it's the offense that's winning right now. You guys are playing defense, but to be fair, this is not just passive because you guys have been involved in dismantling cyber criminal infrastructure, including some of the world's biggest botnets, in, uh, as well as web hosting provider Macolo. So talk, t talk to us more about uh, what you're doing on, on the more active front. How are you involved in that? So that is a purely, I would say, non-business aspect of FireEye where okay. we, uh, as a public service, because we have incredible visibility into the cybercrime command and control infrastructures that operate uh, in the underground internet economy, when we do identify uh, that there is an operating command and control infrastructure uh, and it's very large and it poses a serious risk uh, to the internet, Who then we tell? work... What? Who do you tell? Uh, we work with ISPs, we work with law enforcement, so uh, we work with large tech companies, so the Roostock takedown that happened a few years ago, we did that. Act as the bigger threat than the opportunistic criminals? I would say they are the more sophisticated threat, but the opportunistic criminal has a very wide footprint, uh, probably much larger footprint in terms of their uh, malcode or malware than the state actors. What about but the state uh, terrorists may unfortunately be building up such capabilities. I don't believe they have such a capability today. Uh, but the risk is always there that they get, we get terrorism 2.0, right? And terrorism 2.0 uh, may arm itself in cyberspace. So your active involvement in trying to dismantle cyber, the cyber criminal infrastructure, you say right now, is essentially a public service. That's correct. Right? But you can do it, and you're critical to it. Uh, I'll ask you, I want to ask you a blunt question. You're still a private company. You haven't IPO'd yet. Doesn't that sound like a financial opportunity? To uh, be to taking... charge for this? Uh, well, uh, from a business model perspective, yeah. we believe that taking down cybercrime infrastructures is really not the domain of a private company. It's a law enforcement function. So what we have done is, in effect, a blueprint for a next generation law enforcement. But we have done it because we had the skill. We had the knowledge and the know-how to That's do it. That's got to be worth money, though. Uh, yes, but our, uh, our uh, business model is really more about protecting businesses and enterprises mm -hmm. by providing them the advanced cybersecurity systems that we mm -hmm. build. So that's our fundamental trust. Okay, say hello to Bernie over in Hong Kong. Uh, sure, how are you doing? Uh, and uh, 
uh, you know, fascinating story that you have to tell at uh, FireEye. Fire um, I'm a little bit concerned about uh, the issue of uh, maybe too much oversight. You may be aware that the uh, U.S. government is expanding its cybersecurity program, and it's going to mean more uh, scanning of private communications, private emails. This is according to a few weeks ago a White House uh, uh, counterterrorism and cybersecurity executive order, which allows agencies like the NSA uh, to, uh, uh, you know, be complicit in funneling uh, information that will undergo scrutiny. You know, when you're when you have this whole issue of cybersecurity and cyber espionage, what is the risk that you end up trying to solve the problem by killing a fly with a sledgehammer? I mean, you know, there are per personal uh, privacy concerns uh, amid the whole discussion. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point, and um, I believe the uh, governments, in particular the U.S. government, is very aware of the risk to personal privacy and security. So the uh, executive order that actually came out recently did not include any aspect of a a violation of uh, personal privacy. In fact, it was optional threat intelligence sharing between industry groups and critical mm -hmm. infrastructure, not really government scanning of emails that's actually never been proposed. Uh, this is an interesting point. You guys start at 15,000, you go all the way up to 120,000. That's your fee range for businesses. But you say FireEye pays for itself in less than 24 hours? Tell us about that. How? The uh, interesting uh, aspect of security today is that the fast majority of companies are compromised already and they don't know that. So well over 95% of all organizations are compromised by existing malcode and in the first 24 hours we are typically able to demonstrate that. So that's what we mean by it pays for itself in 24 hours because we are able to not only demonstrate that their systems are compromised but also demonstrate that their data is being stolen and not well over 95 percent. Wow. Gosh. Okay. Sounds like pretty good insurance to me. Uh, Ashar, we got to go. Great to talk to you. Come back and see you soon. Thank, Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. A pleasure. It. A pleasure. Thank you. Ashar Ozzi is here from FIRE.